Right, we've spoken a bit about natural selection, so now let's compare it with artificial selection. Just a reminder to you, artificial selection, this is where we are specifically uh, selecting particular traits that we see in offspring, we being human beings, and we are then artificially breeding those individuals together. So if we're looking at livestock, for example, uh, we would take a prize bull and we would uh, literally cart that bull around in a trailer from one farm to another in order to allow that prize bull to impregnate the cows. If we're looking at plants, uh, we would then artificially pollinate those plants. So, if, for example, you would take a paintbrush, collect all the pollen from one plant, and then artificially select which of the other plants you want to pollinate, and you would then go and paint that pollen on. Many farmers, when they're looking at artificial selection of plants, will actually bag up the flowers so that insects cannot get access to the flowers, so that pollination cannot take place without human intervention. The problem with artificial selection is that because genes are actually linked on chromosomes, what happens is that as you select for one particular gene or one particular trait, you are by default also selecting for a whole bunch of other traits. And unfortunately, sometimes what happens is that the trait that you're looking for in the particular parent that you're choosing, that parent will have a mutation or some other disadvantage trait linked on that same chromosome. And so every time you're then selecting for the particular trait you want, by default, you're also getting a whole bunch of traits that you don't necessarily want. For example, if we look at uh, Alsatians or German Shepherd dogs, the particular uh, characteristics that were originally selected for happened to be linked on the same chromosome with a gene for hip dysplasia. Hip dysplasia is where the ligaments of the hips no longer hold correctly and so the legs dislocate. If you are looking at a purebred German Shepherd or a purebred Alsatian, that dog will have to have an operation usually at around three years of age to prevent hip dysplasia because that is the gene that is unfortunately by default also being selected for when you are looking at purebred uh, German Shepherds. So the result of artificial selection is while you may get the trait you want, you also get a whole bunch of traits that you don't want. And those traits remain constant in your population. In other words, variation in your population decreases. Okay, so if we look at one example of artificial selection. South Africa, we are a maize producing center. Uh, we have a maize triangle up in the north and uh, sort of Joburg, Pretoria area. That's known as the maize triangle and we export a lot of wheat or wheat products as a result of um, uh, sorry maize products as a result of our, our uh, growing program when you look at maize today we have separate male and female flowers what you're seeing there the the pinky color that's a particular um, subspecies of the maize um, what you're looking at there are the stigmas that are sticking out of the female flower on the left and you can see the anthers of the male flower on the right. Just to refresh your memory from uh, grade 11 and from grade 10, um, maize is a monocotyledonous plant. You can see the strappy leaves on the right there uh, with their parallel venation. Uh, it's also important to notice that this is a wind pollinated plant. The reason that the stigmas are sticking out, the reason that the anthers are sticking out, is so that they can be blown by the wind and transfer the pollen from male to female. The male part of the plant, the male flowers, are always at the top of the plant and the female flowers are further down. This is so that as the wind blows, the pollen will be able to fall downwards by gravity and reach the female flower. Okay, so originally maize was known as Tsiosinte and uh, the male and female flowers existed in the same flower. It wasn't separate like it is today. We then began artificially selecting and as a result of that artificial selection, we have wound up with separate male and female flowers. Um, the reason that we, we did that is so that we could have more or better producing corn or better producing maize. Another example uh, is domestic dogs. All domestic dogs from Chihuahuas through to Great Danes are actually the same breed. They are all Canis lupus familiaris or just Canis familiaris. They are able to interbreed with one another and they're able to produce fertile offspring in 99% of cases. Um, quite how a Chihuahua would breed with a Great Dane, I don't know, but theoretically it can be done. Uh, now the reason that dogs look so different is that they were actually bred for specific different purposes. 
So terriers, for example, fox terriers, were bred to have very short legs in order to be able to go down a foxhole and catch a fox. Dalmatians, for example, were bred to run or to jog alongside horse carriages um, and to look beautiful. So uh, those of you who have a Dalmatian, you will know that your Dalmatian needs to run regularly. Um, border Collies, for example, have been specifically bred with an instinct to herd, um, and they also need to run significant amounts because they've been bred to run with the sheep. So each breed of dog actually has been bred for a specific purpose. But they are all connected um, they are all actually the same. So we talk about breeds rather than species because they're all the same species. But we have artificially bred them into different breeds for specific uh, purposes. So you can see there some of the purposes. If we look at plants, um, we have artificially bred plants as well. The easiest example to look at is the brassicas. Uh, so here we have the original brassica, the wild mustard on the left, brassica oleara. Oleracea, Oleracea, can never say that word, um, which we have artificially bred by looking at different characteristics. So, for example, if we've bred for the stem, then we've wound up with a kohlrabi. If we've bred for the leaves, we've ended up with kale. Uh, looking at the flower buds with the stems, we've wound up with broccoli. If we're looking for leaf buds, that's how we get Brussels sprouts. Uh, if we're looking at the terminal leaf bud only, that's how we, so it's very short stem and only terminal bud, that's how we get our cabbage. And if we're looking just for flower buds with no stems attached or very, very, very short stems attached, uh, we've ended up with uh, cauliflower. So these are all of your brassicas and they are all artificially bred or artificially selected uh, for different characteristics from the original plant, which was the, which is the wild mustard. Now in the exam, you will be asked to compare natural selection with artificial selection. So what is similar between the two is that in each of those, variation already exists within the population. So if we think about a field of maize, although they've all been exposed to the same conditions, they will not all be the same height. They will not all have the same number of flowers. They will not produce the same number of anthers, um, etc., etc. So variation already exists in that population. In both cases, whether it's artificial selection or natural selection, variation is inherited from parents to offspring. So whatever the parents have, they will pass on to the offspring. And irregardless of whether it's artificial or natural selection, populations will change over time. So if we look at our German shepherd population, the way that was 500 years ago and the way it is now, the German shepherds actually don't look the same. Uh, the populations have changed over time and certain characteristics like the hip dysplasia have become a lot more frequent. How they are different though, and this is the important bit. With natural selection, the environment is the selective pressure. It's the environment and the changes in the environment that are determining which characteristics are going to be advantageous and therefore will be passed on. With artificial selection, it's the human beings that are doing the selecting. I want a dog that has curly fur, so I'm going to select the ones with the curliest fur and mate those dogs together. The selected traits under natural selection are the ones that are advantageous for survival. Now that doesn't mean they're necessarily the best traits. So for example, if you are a lizard and you are a twitchy lizard, then in most circumstances that's going to be disadvantageous, uh, disadvantageous for you. However, if you're living in the environment where the ants are attacking lizards and actually eating lizards, then being a twitchy lizard will be an advantage to you. So something could be a disadvantage in one environment, but be an advantage in a different environment. So it's not that the trait is good or bad, it's that in that specific environment, the trait either gives you an advantage or it doesn't. With artificial selection, the traits that we're looking for do not necessarily mean that you're going to survive better. So again, with our German Shepherd example, having hip dysplasia is actually not an advantage for survival. Dogs with hip dysplasia end up uh, being unable to control their bowel movements, they end up not being able to walk, um, and in the natural environment, they would die as a result of that. So it is not an advantage for uh, survival. Natural selection maintains variation. Remember, uh, when we're looking in the environment, when we're talking about a species or a population, the wider your variation, the better your chances of survival. Um, if an individual or a couple of individuals in your population have a gene that makes them immune to a particular virus, for example, or that allows them to survive better in a drought condition or whatever it might be, you as a species will survive, you as a population will survive. Um, 
So variation is very, very important, and natural selection actually maintains that variation. When we look at artificial selection, because of the fact that we have genes that are linked together, what happens is that our variation ends up decreasing. Our, our individuals become more and more similar. And certainly when we look at dogs and horses, um, cats, anything that we're breeding for show, um, the more similar they are to the, the archetype, the, the kind of perfect specimen, uh, the better. And so we do see a decrease in variation when we're doing artificial selection.